Good day. In this video, we will take a look at provisional tax. So what is provisional tax? It is an advance payment of tax on estimated taxable income that is not subject to employee's tax. A taxpayer that qualifies as a provisional taxpayer is required to submit provisional tax returns. On assessment, a taxpayer's normal tax liability is reduced by the provisional tax payments that have been made. Now, who is a provisional taxpayer? This is any person other than a company who derives income that does not constitute remuneration or is from an employer who is not registered as such. Right? And then secondly, it is any person that is notified to be a provisional taxpayer by the commissioner. And it excludes a natural person who does not derive income from carrying on of a business if that taxable income from foreign dividends, interest, letting off fixed property and remuneration from unregistered employer is 30000 or less, or the taxable income does not exceed their tax threshold. Previously, taxpayers were required to register as provisional taxpayers, but this requirement is not applicable anymore, right? So as long as you qualify as a provisional taxpayer, then you are required to make provisional tax payments. There's no registration requirements. So on specific dates, you just request an assessment to complete so that you can make your provisional tax payments. There is um, three possible provisional tax payments. Two of these provisional tax payments are obligatory. So you are required as a provisional taxpayer to make at least two obligatory um, payments. The first payment should be made on or before the last day of the sixth month of the year of assessment. And for a natural person, that would be on the 31st of August each year. The second payment should be made on or before the last day of the year of assessment. And that would be on or before the last day of February each year. The third, the third payment is voluntary and it may be made if the first two um, payments were inadequate and this is to avoid interest payments. Right. So the first two are obligatory. The first and second provisional tax payments are, are obligatory and then the the third provisional tax payment is only to be made if the, the first and second payment were um, not adequate. The following steps are used in calculating the first provisional tax payment. The first step is to determine the estimated taxable amount. We will discuss this in the next slide. The second step is to calculate the normal tax on the estimated taxable income that we determined in the first step. Remember to deduct section 6, section 6 capital letter A as well as section 6B rebates. The third step is to then to take the half of the tax payable, that is step 2 divided by Two. And then lastly, to deduct the employee's tax that was paid in the first six months or any foreign taxes paid in the first six months that is allow that on foreign income allowed as a rebate. That will get you to the final result of the first provisional tax payment. Now, how do we determine the estimated taxable income for our first provisional tax payment. The estimated amount should not be less than the basic amount and that is for the first provisional tax 
payment calculation. The basic amount according to paragraph 19 of the fourth schedule is the assessed taxable income of the latest preceding year of assessment. So the year before the one that we are trying to estimate the taxable income, excluding any taxable capital gains, retirement lump sums, as well as withdrawal benefits, severance benefits, as well as other paragraph D specific inclusions. So the taxable income of the latest preceding year of assessment should exclude any taxable capital gains, as well as any retirement lump sums, any withdrawal benefits, any severance benefits, as well as any specific inclusions. The reason for this is because these amounts are not amounts that happen regularly. So for you to have a fair estimate is to make sure that when you take into account or if you had any retirement lump sums, in the latest preceding year of assessment, included in the latest preceding year of assessment, you exclude these amounts so that you have a fair estimate of your taxable income. The latest preceding assessment that is used for taxable income should be received at least 14 days before the due date of the provisional tax payment. For example, if the assessment was received on the 17th of August, that is, if you are making a provisional tax payment that is due on or before the 31st of August, then it was received at least 14 days before the due date. So the assessment that is to be used for your estimate should have been received at least 14 days before the due date of the provisional tax payment. In cases where the latest preceding assessment was not received at least 14 days before the due date of the first provisional tax payment, then the assessment for the year preceding that year will be used if it was received at least 14 days before the due date as well. If the estimate is in respect of a year of assessment that ends more than 18 months before the due date of the provisional tax payment, then you need to adjust the estimate with 8% per year from the end of the latest preceding year of assessment selected. The 8% is not cumulative, so if, for example, two years have passed since the end of the latest preceding year of assessment, then the estimate is increased by 16%. The second provisional tax payment can be calculated using the following steps. The first step is to determine the estimated taxable income amount, similar with this first provisional tax payment calculation. However, the estimation of the amount is slightly different and we will discuss that in the next slide. The second step is to calculate the tax, similar with the first provisional tax payment. Remember to deduct any rebates that would be applicable. The third step, unlike with the first provisional, provisional tax payment, is to deduct a, the employee's tax that was paid for the year of assessment as well as any foreign taxes paid. And then lastly, to deduct the first provisional tax payment that was done. The estimated amount used in the calculation of the second provisional tax payment can be any amount, but penalties and interest may be imposed where the estimated amount is less than the minimum amount. Remember, in the first provisional tax payment, 
the estimated amount that should be used in the first step cannot be less than the basic amount. So for the second provisional tax payment, there is no such rule. So any amount can be used, but in order to avoid um, penalties and interest, the amount or the estimated amount should not be less than the minimum amount. This therefore means that the minimum amount is important. So whatever amount is used as the estimate should be compared to the minimum amount to make sure or in order to avoid any penalties or interest. The determination of the minimum amount depends on whether the taxpayer's taxable income for the current year of assessment is equal to or less than 1 million or it exceeds 1 million. If the taxpayer's taxable income for the year of assessment does not exceed 1 million, then the minimum amount is the lesser of the basic amount or 90% of the actual taxable income. The reason for this determination of the minimum amount is because a penalty will be imposed if a taxpayer's taxable income does not exceed 1 million and their estimated amount is less than 90% of the taxable income. On the other hand, if the taxpayer's taxable income for the year of assessment exceeds 1 million, then the minimum amount is the lesser of the basic amount or 80% of actual taxable income. A penalty will be imposed if a taxpayer's taxable income exceeds 1 million and their estimated amount is less than 80% of the final taxable income. The third voluntary provisional tax payment may be made if the first two payments were inadequate to avoid interest payments. If a provisional taxpayer does not make a sufficient third provisional tax payment, interest will be levied at the published rate from the date the third payment could have been made up to payment of the assessment. The third provisional tax will be calculated using the actual taxable income for the year of assessment. So the first step is different from the first step in the second and first provisional tax calculations. So in the third provisional tax calculation, you do not work with estimates, but you work on the actual taxable income, right? And the second step would be cal to calculate the normal tax. Third, to deduct the employee's tax or any foreign taxes paid during the year of assessment. The fourth step would be to deduct the first provisional tax payment. And then lastly, to deduct the second provisional tax payment. Additional tax, penalties, and interest can be levied where amounts are underestimated, not submitted, or paid before or on the prescribed dates. Please look out for the next video containing an example of the basic principles discussed in this video. Thank you.